uh, how it works, how what you can do, and many other things. So to begin with, this is a this is the agenda to 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 make it uh, clear. So I'll skip the introduction part today because I I already just spoke about it on Monday, uh, and I won't repeat it today. So I'll focus more on the core part of talk today. So I'll start with IoT. What is IoT and its use cases and applications, and what I have done specifically in that particular case. Then, how did I? What is industrial IoT or Industry 4.0, and what are its use cases? What are my particular applications? And then I'll go into the digital twin in mechanical manufacturing and many other applications. And then what are the challenges of building digital twin? If at all you want to build at academic level or your research center or in your own company, how can you get started with building a digital twin uh, in with the simple devices like Raspberry Pi? Then we'll conclude. So let's see how much we can cover. There's a lot to talk about this because, because probably, in last one year or more than one and a half year now I joined, probably I have created four or five digital twin in my company itself. Some of them I'll talk, some of them I cannot talk because still uh, that work is in progress. So uh, that is where uh, it is important to understand what is digital twin. So before we really go, go into the digital twin, let me understand, let me <clears throat> take a step back, a couple of step back and talk about what is uh, IoT first. So as you know, uh, IoT, everyone probably heard, you know, I, I don't think I need to really explain it, but I'll try to put in the right perspective. So it is internet of the thing, right? Internet of the thing. It is a, actually the two things were existing uh, probably a decade ago, a internet or maybe two, two decades ago when I graduated, I just remember uh, we started hearing about the internet, right? So internet was there, things were there, right? Objects are there, devices are there, but they were never connected, right? And a, a, a decade later, somewhere in, I, I graduated in 99 and somewhere in 2010 around, I start, we started hearing something of this uh, IoT, right? Connecting devices to smart devices, many other things, right? So, and today it is an explosion. Today it is an explosion. So there is, Everything, everything we are connecting to internet. Everything we are connecting to the internet. You just see. So even probably I believe if there are 50, 100 participants in the session today, uh, you can probably see everyone is probably using one IoT device. Probably some of you might be using more than one, but many of you, <coughs> Every one of you has a presence of IoT device in your day-to-day -day life. So that is what is the trend today. And if you see, uh, so so let me let me give one example here. So this is a, what is this is a, you might have seen. What is this probably is a Fitbit, right? Or uh, many, many uh, Fitbit is this device, you put it on your, what is this? Is an example of IoT device. It is connecting, way to connect human to the internet, right? Human activity to the internet. This is another example where, right? You, nowadays, a lot of people preferring this uh, smartwatch, right? It is also, Watch was a separate physical object, internet was separate, but in last five years or so, 
smart watch and any device we connect to the internet we start calling it as a smart thing right so that is what is happening so we are connecting watches we are in uk when i shifted here in the house rent house i am staying probably every device i see is can be connected to the internet i can operate via some application so it is predicted so that trend is also growing in india and in by 2025 or maybe 2030 what will happen five top five predictions if you see for iot we are expecting to connect we are expecting to connect 27 billion right or 30 billion iot connections imagine i mean and this number was some 6 billion in 2015 in 5 years we are probably making it five times more then these are just device connections iot connections then there are cellular connections right then there are other industrial connections vehicle to vehicle connection or then what is implication of it is for many companies who makes the devices revenue is going to be huge at the same time every device which is connected to internet is going to create a data and that data will be in huge i mean is in gigabytes now right so every consumer will create lot of data and anyway we are creating that day, monday also i said right so compute i was talking about the compute things and i said the mobile the, the my first desktop in 99 or 2000 was not even equally powerful as my mobile today right so these are the changing trends so how it works probably so you, let's let's take this example of fitbit right which tracks your feet or it senses your heartbeat or uh, depending on kind of fitbit or smart watch you what lot of things are included into that lot of capabilities are there so what it does this is a device sensor probably we call the sensor if if you just see what is it is a small device which has a lot of sensors depending on the capabilities right that sensors collect your data that sensor collects your data and that sends data to your then this sensor connects to a mobile device connects to the mobile device and sends data to the cloud or uh, whatever device you are using probably it provides an app the data goes to the app and then it processes the data whatever it is capturing in on on cloud or non cloud not necessarily cloud should be there but many devices will have the cloud and that processes the data that data is presented in a such a manner which you understand right sensor collects data in a different format and lot of different data is collected not every data is sent to you and then on the app you will see so then in on the app probably you will see some some user friend interface like this which will show which will show some meaningful information which is uh, understood by you or you can customize the information which you want to see so that is how it works so you have a sensors you have that uh, that device is connected to the internet or cloud via 
connectivity protocols and then that 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 data is sent to the some platform that platform processes data and then after processing data it is displayed to the user in a meaningful manner that is how it works right so it is a so this is a typical architecture if we go I'll, I'll expand it later also so it is a typical a four layer architecture i call it is a four layer ar architecture so there is a physical layer so physical layer means your sensors your actual devices like in my home washing machine is connected to the internet Heating, heater is connected to the internet or fridge is connected to the internet. So most of my devices are connected to the internet. Now those devices plus the sensors on it will form or any gateway devices which you use, routers or any additional devices you use. Every physical thing comes under this physical layer. So in this case, probably this is a physical layer and human person to which it is connected is also part of physical layer. Then communication layer, it, it, it has a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, when you establish Bluetooth connection, that is a communication layer. Now this works in a short range, but there can be a situations where you want long range, right? Cellular connection, not just Wi-Fi, right? There are many other connection protocols. Once that data is gone into the platform, then that is a communication layer. In an industrial terminology, which earlier I explained in a more layman fashion, now the platform layer, then when data goes to the cloud or no cloud, any application, the backend, that is called a platform layer, where data will be stored, processed, lot of insights are drawn, AI ML models are used, security aspects are placed in place, and information is presented to the to the so that is a platform layer. All data storing, processing, all everything, whatever happens, once the data goes from the sensor, physical layer to, uh, to the uh, database layer, whatever thing happen there, it's called a platform layer. And then whatever you see in the form and shape, that is the application layer, right? Dashboards, reports, user interface, all that is the application layer. So, one of my examples, I, I talk probably very simple devices here, two devices, but some work I would like to talk about what, I mean, when, when I was at Infosys, I started doing this. So, <clears throat> one of the use cases I remember when uh, one of the customer is a diaper manufacturing customer, imagine. Now, they approach Infosys and they wanted to know, uh, can we make some baby monitoring solution to them? Now, in the beginning, we were not sure, a diaper manufacturing company, what we can do, baby monitoring solution, right? So then I was not sure what to do uh, our, uh, then this, when this requirement came to me, what I did is, my wife is a pediatrician, so that helped me a lot. I just went to her and asked, what do you mean by baby monitoring? Uh, how do you say, uh, baby, uh, how do you, how can we, how do you doctor monitor the baby? Uh, or how a parent can monitor a baby, right? Like that, many questions I asked her and, tried understanding what baby monitoring means from the doctor's point of view. And as a parent, I tried to understand myself what means. I mean, for me, it is very simple as a parent, right? My baby is good. My baby is happy. Baby is you know, good or bad or sad, happy. All that probably is for me. But from doctor's point, how do we capture that, right? So all that... Then we did that uh, discussions and I realized, okay, uh, then, then I went back or we went back to the customer and said, uh, I, I talked to my boss and I said, okay, probably I can solve this problem for a customer, right? And I said, okay, uh, we can build, uh, uh, you can see here, we can build a sensor uh, a system 
which can be attached to the diaper of a baby and then that can give a lot of data to us which can be processed and by processing that data we can tell whether baby what is the status of the baby right so baby monitoring solution and this was typically required to do for you know customers in west where like in uh, us the big houses are big and baby typically sleeps in a in a separate room uh, here also in uk when we shifted last year uh, when we our daughter separate so it, we we are asked we cannot take uh, on a rent one bhk we need a two bhk right because baby need to sleep in a different room so this is the situation and when baby is sleeping in another room you don't know your <coughs> baby is comfortable or not you are sitting in a kitchen or you are outside in a garden and you want to know whether baby is so keeping this in mind the company wanted to build a solution so uh we 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 then I, I i started working on it and we said we can have different sensors like sleep sensors vision sensors activity monitoring sensors feeding sensors urine monitoring sensors and many other sensors we put on a small matchbox type kind of sensor and we propose this solution uh, to the customer and i came up with with uh, 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 index i i said uh, the uh, app will tell um, on a scale of 0 to 10 that is called a baby comfort index so by processing all the data i can calculate a baby comfort index uh, as a function of these various parameters which we are measuring we send that data to the cloud or app something similar to what i said the fitbit and then you know you uh, display it either on the mobile laptop or desktop or tablet whatever the device you are using so that is what uh, uh, one of the early use cases what i i proposed to the customer and customer was uh, very happy to receive this kind of solution and they were willing to do uh, work forward so another another use case if i remember uh, uh, something similar but a little different in this case um, if you remember um, there was a zika virus breakout somewhere in 2014 15 and the company in company in us a pesticide manufacturing company in us insecticide pesticide manufacturing wanted to build a zika a solution for a zika again not sure what to do what can be done again this was specific to the big houses or big places in us uh, where you know um, automated uh, something uh, uh, something i mean company was of course doesn't know what to do and then they wanted to build some uh, some system to because they were in insecticide or pesticide so again uh, uh, what we did is we use iot so i was also not sure what can be done then again i went back to the doctors uh, uh, because i felt uh, that then i really understand at that time i just knew that zika is caused by mosquito so uh, then i was Curious to understand in past in our country, there were a lot of diseases which are mosquito born, right? And then I talked to the doctors, uh, my father in law's doctor who was who worked in a government, government policies and all that. So I talked to him, how do you, how did you uh, control those uh, mosquito born diseases uh, in past? What was the philosophy doing that and all? So then I got to understand uh, from the doctors that okay, uh, uh, to they, they go to the different places, check the mosquitoes, what type of mosquitoes, and um, the di different. Uh, I mean, this malaria and uh, mal I, I believe malaria, if I remember, and uh, some of those they they go different places and try to uh, check the uh, sources uh, and all that, and visually do the inspection of different mosquitoes and all that so taking that 
thinking of that putting in a uh, iot device so what i presented them is a solution okay we can install the cameras in different places that camera will send the data to to data platform layer and then it will automatically have a uh, it not just one way uh, iot device it 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 can it is a two way uh, and it identifies in a certain zone when it is monitoring the uh, mosquito and it can it can connect to the uh, then it identifies what kind of mosquitoes and I, based on that if it is the zika causing mosquito then the system will uh, activate the uh, insecticides or pesticide whatever the uh, chemical they want to use and that is how we we propose this concept this was presented to the to one of the mosquito management workshop in chicago so that's 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 an example of iot i would say uh, uh, there is a thing uh, there is a sensor so in this case it is a camera sensor then processing data data was more of images it was a processing and after processing we can decide what uh, control action to be taken so like similarly probably what you do with this is measure your health and take a corrective action on the health so probably uh, the it to uh, the first half of this decade last decade was more on building this commercial consumer level of iot applications right so more of more the iot started with more of consumer consumer level applications but slowly when the consumer level applications were more and more and they were more often seen and making bringing value to the consumers slowly this kind of application started building into the industrial right industrial uh, applications so industry started adopting those uh, iot concepts into the industry so uh, and slowly there was a growth of uh, adoption and growth of using iot into the into the uh, uh, industrial application so there were so, so application is same a technology if you see the technology is same or as i go down and explain more industrial application you will understand technology is same but there are business different business drivers different business drivers so technology is same if you see left hand side so it it, it has sensors it has communication layer it has physical layer communication layer platform layer application layer, right so everything will remain same but what are the business drivers so maybe at a consumer you want to improve the quality of life or you want to provide the security safety to the human life or you want to the, the devices are more cost sensitive you don't want to make very costly but whereas in industrial applications quality of service is important not just quality of life the more robust security is important and return of investment right um, is important efficiency is important you want to bring new products or, and you want to enter into the new markets for example new products when i say now every every, every company start when when they started connecting uh, sensors to the devices let's say washing machine they, when someone connects to the sensor to washing machine now they started calling smart washing machine right smart fridge or smart car or smart now everything started becoming smart so new products started coming into picture and they are they started entering into the new market some some started entering new market right so like that so there are different business drivers but technologies so today if you go to the any any company any any company so one of the key key thing happening is is digital transformation i mean what iot is doing if you really see see some of these examples some of these examples is it is trying to convert a physical information into the digital information right so efficiency or let's say 
I want to see what is the operation time of a particular device. So earlier it was the person goes, keeps the records and all that. Now that things are digitized. So everywhere we want to do the digital transformation. Every company trying to do the digital transformation in terms of technology, in terms of communication, in terms of data, in terms of IoT, automation, AI, networking, a lot of things are there in the digital transformation. Because of rise of internet of the things, digital transformation is one of the buzzword uh, into the industry. So what are the applications? Just take a, a automotive, let's say, right? What are the IoT applications now, industrial side? We talked about, we talked about I, consumer side earlier. So if you see now, uh, automotive, how it is using, is it is using, doing the fleet management, connected cars, uh, maintenance. So if you remember, right, uh, nowadays, if you have a car, probably you buy car now, gives alert to you, you are, when is the next service, right, maintenance. Uh, and more and more, Monday, I talked about autonomous vehicle, right? So maybe in future, you will have driverless cars or in car vehicle and infotainment, you want to a oh, lot of those. So many of these are, some of these are like connected car is still again, futuristic application, but fleet management is again a futuristic. You have seen that uh, Google is already doing hundreds of car. They are now managing, right? So companies, those, those providing services to will do that. And on other side, this is, this is more for, for consumers, uh, uh, on other side, in the industrial area, industrial factory of IO uh, automotive, what, what can be the application? So doing the real-time asset tracking, asset means any physical device of company, quality control, inspection, maybe you can use those camera barcodes, and then or you can monitor from remotely or supply chain management. You want to know, let's say, you order some of the component systems of required, and you want to know where it is now, real-time monitoring, real-time tracking, all that, right? Quality checking. When it came automatically, it will check the quality and things like that. Product monitoring. During manufacturing, you want to do the uh, product monitoring or safety of the people, safety of the environment, all that can be done. Yeah. Right, that that's uh, that's different things are being done in the industry now. So there is a rise of something called industrial IoT or industrial IoT with the rise of IoT. Uh, there was a rise of industrial IoT we call IIoT, uh, and some people. Uh, so there was a new term coined for Industry 4.0. Now another term people call is cyber physical infrastructure. So it's all interchangeable terms so it's same thing industry 4.0 industrial iot cyber physical infrastructure all that uh, boils down the same so let's talk about what's industry 4.0 why why what is this term how it has come all that right so we know uh, industrial revolution everyone knows right industrial revolution what is industrial revolution so the first time when when muscle power or human power or animal power was stopped, converted into the mechanical power, right? Or steam power. We, the first industrial revolution, we always credit to the uh, invention of the steam engine, right? So people started using uh, mecha mechanical power or people started using steam power, other, other form of power, not human. So that was in 1780s somewhere around the 1780s, early days of industrialization. First industrial revolution we call as a industry 1.0 now. Now over the period of time, almost a century is probably passed and we realize when industrially products were manufactured through the industry, we realize the demand of those products has increased, right? So more and more cars are required, more and more equipments are required, so companies started working towards making a mass production somewhere in 80s, mid 80s, right? 
so that is what uh, uh, 19, 18, 1870 is around another revolution took place people started automation that uh, uh, mass production using mechanical uh, systems automation systems so that era we call as industry 2.0 and then somewhere in 19 after another century a technological change happened and to in, improve the product increase the production improve the product quality increase the safety all those parameters which i taught people started adopting now here it was still uh, mass production through mechanical systems and a lot of manpower was involved but over the period of time with the rise of computers and electronics industry started adopting computer systems electronic system robotic systems to do the job to do the mass production into the to do the lot of work into the industry workplace and that era we call it as a industry 3.0 so until until a decade ago probably or uh, one one decade ago probably we were in industry 3.0 or many of the industry today we can still call uh, the industry 3.0 uh, unless and otherwise they are connected to the internet not i mean not a people in the company but many devices are connected to the internet so now with the the same system same industrial setup industry 3.0 setup we want to connect it to the iot we want to connect it to the internet and we started doing it and somewhere in probably this decade i would say this is the phenomena in this decade and industry 4.0 is more heard in last five six years okay so industry 4.0 is also that is why it is called industrial iot this Industry 4.0 is widely used term or cyber physical system, whatever it is, it is a more or less similar thing. So same phenomena, same, it just, we are just connecting to the internet. So what are the, what are the main pillars of IoT, right? So if you go, uh, so these are typically widely accepted uh, pillars uh, of IoT. Uh, one is, say autonomous robots, cloud computing, internet of the things, cyber security, augmented reality, virtual reality, system integration, simulation, big analytics, additive manufacturing, and so on. So if you look at probably I have worked most of these pillars, except like maybe I've not done much on the big data and so on, but most of those are some cyber security aspects are not done. But many of these aspects have been working all around the industry 4.0. So there is another trend in industry. So because of this I, uh, IoT and industrial IoT, we are now talking of connected ecosystem, connected system, connected processes, connected people, connected assets. So everything we want to connect. What? So that is another terminology you might hear, connected, connected cars, right? Connected factories, connected machines, connected factories. So we are working on in nuclear EMS, connected factory. We worked on one of the project known as connected 3D printer system. So we have 3D printers, we have three, four locations. Within location, there are multiple physical locations, multiple 3D printers are there, we, we said, uh, uh, Three months ago, we, we demonstrated connected 3D printing system. So connected assets, and we want to connect assets, people, processes, everything. And that is possible because of IoT or industrial IoT. So again, if you see, the architecture is same. It has physical layer, things to be connected, sensors, gateways, controllers. Then communication layer, which communicate between the digital. So this is top is digital layer. This is a communication layer and this is a physical layer. So this digital layer has again application layer and platform layer. The data is sent to this, right? So this is a generic architecture, generic industrial IoT architecture or industry 4.0 architecture. 
will change depending on the specific applications. When I was at Infosys, I was working uh, some of the Industry 4.0 projects. And then one of the projects we were involved was building this. Now, I just said, if you remember, I said many of the industries are still Industry 3.0 umbrella they are not still industry 4.0 the problem is many industries are using robots many industries are using computer system electronic control system electronic system and all that but whether they are ready to become industry 4.0 they can can they become so that was the question i mean every customer comes uh, because this industry 4.0 is a buzzword we'll ask we want to become industry 4.0 how can we become so we work with University of Akatech, Germany, and we, we established something called Akatech Industry 4.0 Maturity Index. So if you search on Google Infosys Akatech Industry 4.0 Maturity Index, you will come across some reports. So those kind of things work because we wanted to tell people are you ready? Some some industries wanted to know. Are can how can we become industry? We want to become industry. So we started using this report. Or some industries wanted to know. We want to. Are we industry ready? Four point zero. What we need to do to become an industry four point zero. So all those questions we wanted to answer. Or when someone comes and says, we want to do industry four point zero, but. First question was, are you ready? So for that, this maturity index was essential and uh, we did and it, it's a more. Now, I recently redraw on this architecture at my current workplace, a nuclear AMRC. So again, these are the some of the machines which are in our factories. These are the some of the communication protocols we can use. These are the some of the data processings we can do. Uh, we suggested, I suggested either cloud or no cloud or on-premise, data lakes, data warehouse, you know, a lot of those, that, that part probably belongs to computer science and engineering. And then application layer again, dashboards, monitoring uh, across the devices and all that. So this is a mat maturity index, as I said, right? So uh, uh, one, one uh, uh, picture I took out of that. So many industries are computerized and maybe connected internally, not to the internet. Now, why you want to connect, right? Visibility, you want to get more transparency, you want to predict in advance, you want to adapt to the changing needs. So your journey starts like this. So first thing is you need to connect, right? So are you ready to connect? Like yesterday only, I'll talk about one of the Yesterday only I was at one of the shipping port in UK and we proposed them a digital twin. And that was the question. He said, uh, or the, the, the port person said, it's all fine. You are proposing a great concept, but do you know what is the status of our equipment? Some of the equipments are very old, probably. I don't know if you can connect any IoT sensor to that, right? So that are the challenges. So industry 3.0 is that. So although internally you may have computerization, everything, but is it ready to connect to the internet, right? So that is the main part we have to think when you are. And once another thing comes into picture is, what you will do? I mean, do, why do you want to connect at all, first of all? So, you need to have the answers. Even if you connect, what you will get, right? And after you get that information, what you will do with that information, right? And after you answer what you will do, probably you need to think how you go forward from there, right? So this is what, if you are not clear, then implementing any industrial IoT has no meaning, okay? So this is one of the another one one huge case we work in Infosys. You know, Infosys is a large campuses. I think twelve or fifteen cities, big big campuses, known for fancy buildings, right? And then uh, that time when I was in this is this is probably the work around 2016, 17, 18, 
or earlier. And then we were trying to implement industry 4.0. So we, we have large industrial assets like HVNC, heating systems, cooling systems, and uh, and it was realized that we, we connected them all sensors, we created digital twins, we created, you know, started connecting system, collecting data, then we started doing predictive maintenance. So many of these HVAC systems, generators, elevators, building systems, sewage treatment plants, solar power plants, all these are this is there in Infosys. And we, we started connecting to showcase the benefits of Industry 4.0. So we started connecting everything through the sensors to the internet and then started measuring, monitoring, and then doing a lot of other things like building digital twins, predictive maintenance, and many other things. So it and it was useful to do because over the period of almost eight years, Infosys realized benefits of almost 46% of energy saving, right? And that's a huge amount. So leading to probably $100 million saving for the company. <clears throat> so coming to the concept of a digital twin, what is a digital twin, right? <clears throat> so <clears throat> digital, so, so far I tried to make things very simple. That's what's IoT and how you are part, how it works. And then I built up a story on what is this industry 4.0. And now how this, what is this new trend digital twin in a, in a industry 4.0. This is a, one of the trend, very much trend uh, everywhere. Today you go, you will heard hear this digital twin. Every company want to build a digital twin. <coughs> So what is digital twin? Is a, is a digital replica of physical system. Any physical product, service, process, or human, anything, anything, digital copy of anything in a layman fashion, you can call as a digital twin. So we are trying to create a digital twin of aircraft, trying to create a digital twin of windmill, trying to create a digital twin of the robot, try to create now probably in future, I will not be surprised if someone says we have created a digital twin of a human or we want to create a digital twin of process, service, everything, right? I'll give some examples. So before I really go into that, so, um, uh, so digital, that is why digital twin has become because industry 4.0, it has become more and more pervasive. So digital twin has garnered, you know, significant interest over the period of time. So we want to convert any real space into the virtual space and connect them, not just create digital copy, but <coughs> connected copy, connected copy, right? So that is a digital, that is the value of the digital. Otherwise, just creating a digital has no meaning. So here is a probably uh, video to understand. Let's try to. So whether sound is coming, I don't know. If not coming, let me know. There is a sound. <coughs> so video sound is there. So digital twin is the future, definitely. Digital twin is future. And uh, here is an, before I really go into the details about digital twin, how it was, what, what you can do and all, probably another example from Infosys. Hi, my name is Kevin Donnell. I'm an experienced design lead here at Infosys. 
what we have here is a 3D printed uh, aircraft jet engine. It's an open source model that we've made a couple modifications to. So just let me understand. Uh, are you able to hear the sound of the video, sir? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. IoT use case for our artificial intelligence platform with large industrial assets. Myself and uh, two other VR experts uh, spent the last week and a half developing not just this model, but an entire augmented reality overlay that goes along with this experience. So with this 3D printed turbine, we have a couple sensors on board. There's a strain gauge sensor to measure the deflection of the plastic. There are temperature sensors to measure the temperature of the combustion chamber where one of the two engines are lying. And those two engines on board, each of these two engines drive the separate spools on board. So all of these sensors are collecting data, feeding this information up into the cloud. And they were able to grab that information from the cloud with the Microsoft HoloLens and display that information on top of these jet engine turbine in a contextualized manner. The strain gauge will show a blue-green heat map overlying the deflection of the plastic throughout the casing of the engine. The temperature sensor will give the user a red-orange stratification of the temperature through the, the fan section up through the combustion chamber and then down into the turbine. And the user is also able to get information on speed throughout the different blade sections. Additionally, there's a one-for-one -one digital representation that is built of this exact same model, which is a digital twin of this smaller 3D printed jet engine turbine. We're able to leverage uh, prognostics, scroll out one to two years out into the future to understand what this turbine would be experiencing if we continue to run at this specific duty cycle. We can then break down this larger engine into very specific components, all of which are make up this very complex model and understand root causes of specific failure points that we might be able to determine one to two years out. So we can then use that information of this knowledge model to teach people how to go in and service large assets like this turbine. And so this can be applied to many other large industrial assets. Anything that has surplus of sensors, information coming off of it, we can introduce this new way of how these things are going to, to react downstream and better prepare for servicing them in the future. So that was another, you know, uh, you, you can see how digital twin can be useful. So uh, you can use this for a variety of purposes. So this digital twin, what we built uh, at Infosys, uh, it has a lot of applications and it also uses all those pillars of Industry 4.0, if you remember. I mentioned additive manufacturing, I mentioned simulation, I mentioned data, cybersecurity, VR, yeah, many other things, right? So we did all that. Probably this this use case probably has many of those uh, those uh, uh, pillars included. And uh, also, if you remember, um, this can be used for a variety of purpose. It can be used for knowing, predicting the you know failure of the system. So you can think of machine operating, and I create a digital twin of an operating machine. What happens these days or nowadays, if you see industry 3.0 era, you will come across um, the maintenance is a scheduled activity, right? And many times, often that, 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 that seems working, and, but many times some machines fail and unpredictably. So there is a unplanned downtime. So that can be avoided using such kind of system. So you have seen in that video, uh, it can tell you uh, in future how long this is going to work probably, or at least it will warn you just before the failure so that you can try to understand the root causes of the failure. Or you, if you get a alert much earlier, you can keep the, maintenance system in then we, you can probably using this you can go towards the prescriptive maintenance right and uh, then there can this can be used digital twin can be used for training the resources uh, explaining some complex systems and many other things can be done so apart from you know using it in operations uh, apart from using it in 
So there are there are many many applications of uh, it as then this can be done more immersively by integrating with the VR and all. Hi, so that is a, that is a, uh, so before uh, before coming to coming to uh, UK, I was working at Wipro. I was uh, a part of building a digital twin for for British Petroleum, uh, and it is it it is one of the sites for which we are building the digital twin clear rays and uh, you can imagine the scale of of uh, uh, this site right uh, it was about uh, probably 300 400 meter uh, size and it is it is a huge probably so you can see 280 meter was a high and uh, same is uh, probably in that uh, lateral direction and uh, uh, in a london there is a london eye which is we uh, is huge sitting into that london eye probably you can uh, it is called you can see the whole of the london so which is just 130 meter right uh, in a height or probably um, the, the some of the buildings in in uh, Dubai are probably are in the US are around 300 meters. So that is the scale of you know the 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 uh, oil oil extraction site into the into the uh, US. So what we did is we built a digital twin of this. We built a digital twin of this. Uh, I was I was part of that project in 2018-19. So let's see. There is a video I took up from uh, Microsoft um, website. So just, this is just to understand, this is not digital screen. This is just showing the, the, the site. Uh, clear this side uh, what is the scale of operation and then we we connected a lot of sensors to it we got a lot of information lot of uh, then that info sensor information sent to the internet connection from the internet connection we, pro we built a database platform platform layer and from there we built a uh, application layer including vr air kind of applications So this is a huge, huge site, huge number of assets, huge number of, you know, you can see the complexity. So imagine now we are connecting sensors to many of the devices and many of the things and then creating 3D representation of this 
and what's uh, creating it for the VR AR. So that becomes you know huge huge uh, task. And now what you will get building mounting sensors is imagine this is a very harsh situation where you know remote place uh, safety aspects are there. So in more real time, instead of waiting failure to occur or instead of something to happen, if we can mount the sensors and collect information in more real time and avoid some of those things. So that's that's something we we tried uh, doing for the for the uh, building a digital team. We can do a lot of those things. So sitting in the remote place, I can try to uh, I can try to you know. Uh, monitor, major, and um, uh, take a corrective actions for the systems. So that's a huge video, probably I'll not play it again. I'll send out a link, probably you can watch it later. So what is that important was to understand the scale of that. And so again, as I said, IoT architecture remains same. Digital twin architecture also remains same. Industrial 4.0 architecture remains same. It has a four layers, physical layer, communication layer, platform layer, and application layer. So now we are in the era of digital twin. Uh, recently, this is a, from my work. Uh, this once I joined here, we, we propose. Now you might have heard uh, uh, UK. UK is one of the first country in the world who has committed to be carbon neutral or net zero. So there is a lot of trust from the government side and they want to build a digit, uh, they want to make every everything, every uh, energy consuming device as a net zero, no carbon emission, zero carbon emission is the, is the goal, right? 2050, by 2050, nuclear want to become a net zero and when I joined here, my company asked me can, uh, what we can do for the net zero manufacturing, specifically for manufacturing. Can we make the manufacturing operations net zero? So I was not sure, but I did some research and proposed uh, this to the company. I said, this, this I brought some of my experiences from Infosys Wipro. Uh, in Infosys, we did that. You, you saw that industry 4.0 application for smart buildings. In BP, we did that clear reads. Uh, sorry, in Wipro, I did that BP clear reads. And that experience I thought I can use to, I can build a digital twin for net zero manufacturing. So in manufacturing, what are the sources of carbon emission? Uh, there are scope one, scope two, scope three, upstream, downstream, and operational, right? So I thought, because this, this is a picture of our manufacturing factory here in UK, it's a huge factory, huge equipment, huge devices, right? So what I thought, uh, probably we can build a digital twin and digital twin for net zero, specifically for the net zero. Uh, the earlier one was for oil extraction, earlier one was predictive maintenance, before that, I talked about many. So digital twin can be built for various purposes. So this was for the net zero manufacturing. So what we said, uh, we will connect the sensors to every energy consuming assets on the manufacturing factory, collect the energy consumption data, estimate the carbon footprint, and do the visualization, and draw the insights out of it, and create the action plan, and act, do the control back action. So it will be built on ISO standards. It will achieve, it is one of the industry 4.0 trained digital twin. Business outcome is net zero operation. You will become more sustainable, right? Well built dashboard. So this is, a, and the idea was, idea was, I mean, idea is, uh, to make it a plug and play. For example, the major problem, what, what I understood from, from uh, talking to many 
manufacturers or while working on this research, I, I came across many, many challenges. One is three major challenges in UK or worldwide probably is applicable. Technology, skill and resources. So this is a technology which is not the core technology of any manufacturer, right? So digital technology comes from interdisciplinary manufacturing, computer science background. So most factories lack digital skills. Second, they don't, I mean, this is huge kind of application. Resources are required, skills are required. And third, technology is complex, diverse technology, right? different databases, many other things, and many, many, many things are there. So what is, I mean, to address that, uh, I suggested we'll build a plug and play digital twin. And what is the current status in the industry to build this digital twin for what industry is doing net zero? Many small and medium manufacturing companies are not doing much to, to for the net zero operations. And small, big companies doing something because they have implemented some sensors, some doing some industry 4.0. Many big companies are becoming industry 4.0 ready. But small companies or medium companies are still in industry 3.0 era. They are not industry 4.0 ready. So we said, the, this is a very ambitious goal and uh, probably around 200K pounds, 200,000 pounds, you have been sanctioned for this research for the next year. I and mean, in this year, probably we will be building this digital twin plug and play digital twin. We are, we are working on a very ambitious project. We say, forget about what is the technology behind it. You focus on your core business, that is manufacturing. That is your core business. What we'll do is we'll build a black box. This is a black box. This is a black box. Don't worry about it. You have factory devices. You just equip them with the sensors and actuators. Let us know what is that complete list of your machines, sensors, actuators. What kind of sensors you are going to mount, what kind of actuators you are going to use and all that. We will automatically create a digital twin for you. We will create a digital twin. So that is a plug and play digital twin. You just create a physical layer. Digital layer, leave it, leave it, leave it to us. We'll give it, and this we want to make as an open source technology. So we built, let's say in UK, every UK manufacturer can use it if it is made available worldwide, worldwide, every manufacturer will use it and every manufacturer will become a net zero. And over the period of time when we start collecting data, a lot of insights will be given. How, what are the energy consumption parameter? What is their carbon footprint? How much carbon they are emitting? emitting what they can do, where they can save, what, how they can optimize their operations, how the machine lines can be aligned, uh, artificial intelligence that on friday i'm going to talk about the smart uh, smart uh, intelligent operations intelligent machines right then i'll talk about how ai can play a role into that and all that so what ai will be there automatically everything will be in the back end uh, manufacturer need not to worry manufacturer need to do only one thing is they connect their then because to build a, a digital twin or a industry 4.0 uh, you need to implement the sensors. At least that you will have to do. Once you have done that, you will have state-of-the-art digital twin done automatically. That is what we are working. So it will like you connect, collect, uh, create all that plan uh, is 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 uh, is uh, is put in place. Maybe the interest of time probably I'll I'll. Uh, so this is what I was saying yesterday. I, I was just in the. I just, I, I cannot present exactly what we presented there because it's still new. So you know, it's still kind of secret, not secret, but uh, it is under discussion. So 
uh, I thought just I'll pick up some some video and I'll talk about. Uh, so we 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 plan to we, we propose yesterday quite a time a digital thing. Just yesterday I came out of the meeting. Uh, last week I was working on the proposal. We told the uh, uh, shipping port we'll build a digital twin for you. So uh, what what is that digital twin uh, will do for them is. So what is the problem? Uh, uh, there are there are some problems. So this is a we went to the port of time in Newcastle yesterday, and we presented. We'll make five G enabled digital twin for them. What is the problem? In this this is a huge port, shipping port, and uh, there are vessel operations, there are cargo equipments, there are huge cargo handling equipments, <clears throat> there are warehouses, big big warehouses. There are a lot of terminals there, right? And the problem is uh, they are facing is uh, with the vehicle operation, all these uh, cranes, gantries, hoppers, uh, vessels, uh, containers, they are not able to track in more real time. So they are, or some of the assets are not connected, like they are legacy equipments. They are not even in industry 3.0 era. And some of the equipments they are doing RFID. Then recently Port of Time has established 5G. So they want to use a 5G. And that is and currently it is underutilized. There are there is there are they are facing challenges of congestion, labor shortage, inefficient asset utilization, unwan unwanted unwarranted maintenance. There are a lot of different set of operations. Indoor tracking, cyber security, these are the challenges they are facing. And at the same time, the same challenges like I talked in my digital twin, technology skill and resource challenges they are facing because they don't know the technology or they are just trying, they have just started their journey. So it, it happens, you know. So everywhere, this is the challenge, any traditional operation. Technology, skill, and resources are the challenges. So what we said then, okay, we will build a digital twin which will utilize your 5G and it will have cybersecurity, all these challenges we will address and build a digital twin of your port to improve your net zero operations, to improve your operational efficiency, to improve your utilization, to increase your business, to do predictive maintenance, prescriptive maintenance, corrective maintenance, all that can be done. So what are the benefits of using 5G? That's something important to understand. As I said, in the, my first slide, I said, we are going to connect billions of devices, right? Or probably just think yourself, five years ago, you hardly had any device, but today you have either one minimum or maybe Two, some people might have more than two and like that. So many devices we are connecting. So congestion, the connection density is increasing. So you can see per kilometer square, the connection density is limited in 4G. Left hand side, you see the 4G. Right hand side, you see. So data transmission latency is there. That is why port of time is not able to track their equipments in more real time. So that is why they have established 5G. Latency is one millisecond. Data traffic, data transmission. You cannot transmit huge data in 4G, whereas in 5G, it is almost five to 10 times more. The data, peak data, which you can transmit is just limited one GB in 4G. It is a 20 GB per second in 5G. Spectrum is 10 times more. Density connection, connective, connected devices density can be 10 times more. So that is a, and you can use it for variety of purposes, variety like uh, sending video, right? Over the internet is becoming difficult. So 5G will resolve a lot of those. Tracking will become easy, predictive maintenance, additive manufacturing or Many, uh, many other things you can do with the 5G. That is what is the 
so this is this is what uh, another example of uh, creating digital twin of the real world environment so it is just see right so this is let's see is a different kind of digital twin I'm Alyssa Sharp, a Senior Program Manager in Azure IoT. I'm excited to show you how Azure Digital Twins lets you create an intelligent environment, combining data from all of your IoT devices, business applications, and really any other data source to model, monitor, and manage real-world environments. For this demo, we will show how Azure Digital Twins modeling capability. So this is what we use Azure Insights Digital Twin for the British the supply chain of a clothing company digital on track. Twin. As I go through this demo, I challenge you to think and imagine how the capabilities of Azure Digital Twins can be easily transposed or applied to your industry, your processes, your environments, and can ultimately keep your business operating smoothly. Really, the possibilities are endless. Let's dive in. Here is a global view of your suppliers, manufacturers, transportation, warehouses, and retailers. By combining data from IoT sensors, business applications, third-party sources, and applying the Azure Digital Twins model, you get a real-time representation of the health of your supply chain. For example, if you want to look at the production in one of your factories in South America, you can click on the factory and important metrics are given. If you manufacture your own goods, you're able to view what's happening within this factory. The efficiency would track the energy consumption and would pull data from your IoT sensors so you can make sure that it stays within the level the company has outlined. The reliability pulls in data from your ERP system, showing you if the factory ships on time, with good quality, and within budget. Open orders will let you quickly see what the factory is preparing. An intelligent environment doesn't refer to a standard building. If I click into one of our shipments, I can see the status of our goods and transports. Tracking each container's location, temperature, and humidity, I can quickly identify if a product will be damaged before it even arrives to a retailer. This particular shipment is scheduled to arrive on time and is currently within the humidity levels we need to maintain a good product. Nobody wants any moldy clothes. All of this data passes through Azure IoT Hub and into Azure Digital Twins, where it's combined with all of the business data you need to provide the cost and context. Here in the Azure Digital Twins Explorer, you can see the model of the supply chain created using our Digital Twins definition language. Here we can see how the Digital Twins are connected to ultimately create that intelligent environment. Within each twin, I have specific metadata captured and then surfaced on the previous dashboard. Here is the factory we looked at. You can see the model on the right side of the screen showing how the factory is performing. We can see the reliability, the efficiency, and the open orders. Same with the shipment. Here is the digital twin of the shipment. So maybe in the interest of time, I'll just skip that. So just wanted to give that, you know, uh, digital twins are uh, growing and growing. So uh, in a Wipro, uh, we we work on something called digital twin. So every now with the rise of you know rise of yeah, industry 4.0 or IoT thing, everyone started calling digital twin digital twin. So we try try to create a different levels of a digital twins. So we create we said a digital twin can have a different levels dep depending on the maturity. What kind of what you are doing with that? So level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, and it can have yeah, level one is a basic level, which are just so in a, in a mechanical industry when people people who are using CAD, CAE, CAM started calling that as a digital twin also, but it is not digital twin. Probably it is it can be called a virtual twin. So we said if if at all you want to call that as a digital twin, so we can call it as a level one digital twin as a CAD model, CAD representation. Level two, if you augment it with the simulations, maybe a level two. Level three can be, uh, then when you mount the sensors on the existing CAD uh, base or CAE base, representing a digital twin, augment with the IoT sensor data, then it is a digital, a level three digital twin. And then you can do a lot more different analysis with that. and then. 
when you augment it with the physics uh, expert system, right? So CAD, CA, sensor, plus now expert system, that's the level four. And when you make it at an enterpri enterprise level and autonomous kind of thing, it is a level five. So there is a link, I, I'll probably provide a link. You can read, uh, there is a white paper on Wipro website. So that is what we can call the, the, the one which I presented that day, right? So the, the digital representation of a physical something is CAD representation is we started calling a level one or a virtual twin uh, people, some people are calling it. So that can be presented in VR and all. So that each level of digital twin can give a lot of different benefits depending on what, what all you are doing. But in general, digital twin can have a lot of, so it can be used for across product life cycle, maintenance, management, product design, manufacturing, production planning, process planning, production operations, manufacturing, additive manufacturing, supply chain, you have seen a lot of those, maintenance, product opti uh, production optimization, and many other things you can do digital twin. So digital twin has a lot of, lot of applications, uh maybe again uh in the interest of uh so th this is just how how do you build right digital twin so first step is towards the create sensors connect the sensors communicate to the iot get the data build this data platform ai ml analysis get the insights and i that's something which i talked in my in my uh uh, plug and play digital twin right so that's something you can do probably i'll skip some of the sites and then go into uh, into the step step by step process to build a digital twin uh, in the uh, you can you can start imagining identifying do the pilot then deploy industrially scale it measure it so that is what the step by step process to realize your dream to building a digital twin. Uh, again, uh, I am uh, uh, running through fast, but I want to touch upon one of the important, many, many times people ask me. In fact, I have this something called Raspberry Pi. I could not find today. Maybe I think it is in factory. Uh, I did not bring it home. So now it is very early morning. And so I, I did not, I forgot because of some, uh, work commitment. So, but many times people ask me, how can I build digital twin? Can I build digital twin? And yes, uh, everyone can. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, uh, I'm doing now. A lot of students do internship with me, and any of your students or any of are interested to learn online, I'm still doing. So, my numbers and emails are given on every slide. If you are interested to contact me, you can contact. So. Uh, I tell uh, one of the student is currently doing is I asked to build a digital twin of a home uh, uh, energy monitoring system. So automatic, the same philosophy that student is working on building the same philosophy of plug and play. So uh, he's working on digital side. She's working on the digital side and physical side. We'll see how it is. So. Uh, one one thing can be done is you can build a digital twin using a Raspberry Pi. So many people are students are uh, this may be useful for the academics and students. So Raspberry Pi is a very small, you know, not even mobile size, half the mobile size, I will say, a device and uh, founded uh, started in 2009, and it is a very affordable, low power, very powerful device. It's like a computer. I'll say a card size computer. And uh, it has a lot of features. You can connect a lot of sensors, a lot of devices, USB devices, uh, display devices, power. It can be powered by mobile power and all that. And uh, this is the overview of the Raspberry Pi. If you have, uh, you can think of using that. There are a variety of models of the Raspberry Pi can be used. And uh, then you need to understand this connection pins because you want to connect many sensors to this right if you are they are not usb or wi-fi bluetooth connectable maybe this is a this is the place where you will have to connect your sensors connect this do the connections of this power connection display connections just install the operating system 
connector LED, and probably that's something uh, you can do, or you can connect the webcam. Very simple projects, yeah. And then you start adding more and more, and then you can establish Raspberry Pi as a system to plat, uh, which has a platform layer. You can build a display layer, and it connects to the physical layer. So that's that's something I typically tell the people to do if they are interested. And so just to probably, I I had to rush in the last, but yes. Uh, to conclude, IoT is disrupting many, not much just IoT automotive, but any all industries uh, or consumers, right? And many technologies like AI, ML, TL, VR, with chains or blockchain. Industry 4.0 is disrupting industries. Digital twin is the latest trend in Industry 4.0, but there are several challenges to overcome because the technology is a complex. Digital side is a complex and, and physical side is also complex because you'll have to install the sensors, you'll have to install the controllers, you'll have to see how. And probably Raspberry Pi is one of the device to start to build your proof of concepts or some of the research you can do. So here are my numbers and email ID if anyone is interested to know, probably feel free to contact and maybe I'll stop here. We can have some questions. Uh, if you have any. So you can probably speak out or you can probably type your questions in the chat box. And if not now, uh, maybe once again, I am meeting you on Friday. Uh, uh, so if you have any questions, then you can ask. Uh, I hope uh, that makes sense. I think no questions. Uh, thank you, sir, once again. <laughs> it was, well, I hope it was uh, audible, clearly visible. And yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, participant, if uh, uh, from your side, no question, then uh, we will conclude that our session is end. Uh, sir, we'll uh, meet on uh, Friday, I think. Yeah. Yes. Uh, on that day, you also discuss some things. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Uh, you are too busy. I know you are too busy. You are uh, from uh, UK. Right now, you are uh, present in UK. And for our request, you are delivering your session for us. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. No problem. No okay. problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. All participants, please, please note that uh, our next session will be start on uh, 12 30 p.m. So, all participants, please be with. Uh, Zoom link. Also, I will provide a YouTube live link. Those uh, who are, have not joined uh, Zoom link uh, due to technical reason, they can join on uh, YouTube also. For attendance purpose, they can uh, put your uh, your name and college name on comment box so that I will consider attendance. Okay. So, thank you all. We will meet at 12.30 p.m. Thank you.